Greetings, viewers, and welcome to another episode of The Collection Crib. I am your host, Tyler Cloud. Today, we're going to be looking at the second part of my Dragon Ball Z Irwin Toy Collection. Now, if you've seen the first part of my Irwin Toy Collection, I pretty much covered the Saiyan Saga and the Frieza Saga toys, which were the 5-inch figures, the blasters, and the striking figure. Well, it was only Piccolo, but he didn't have his board. But here's the board. We're going to test this guy out on one of the other striking toys today. But in this episode, we're going to cover the series 4, 5, and 6 of the Irwin Toy Collection. And talk about some of the other accessories it came with. And, well, first of all, let me just go on and say the first series was mainly collectibles. They were the ones I scooped up mainly just to, you know, have them. These were the ones that I first collected as a child, early teenager. As we start off Series 4, we got Goku. So let us look at Goku. Holy crap, it took us this long to get a 5 inch figure of Goku. Even though he represents the Android Saga, his, um, his attire is not exactly correct. He shouldn't have his um, King Kai logo. I believe that's the King Kai logo. Um, leave a comment down below if I'm wrong on that, but if it's during the Android Saga, he shouldn't have that, uh, logo. But other, other than that, Goku is shiny, he looks ready for action, he is pissed off, he looks like he's doing, like, the, I don't know, the Wolf Fang pose or something. Kind of inter interesting pose for Goku, but, hey, I mean, finally, <laughs> we finally got a Goku. We got Goku, people, we finally got Goku! <laughs> Goku is amazing. One of the best uh, looking Gokus in this collection, but whew, that's saying a lot because there's a lot of Gokus after this. I think after they heard, after the first three series of figures, they were like, all right, we got, we need Goku. We got to make as many Gokus as we can. Oh, no, 18. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, everybody. Okay. We're going to have to fix this. Let's bring in the androids together. But look at these two. Badass. They are in their late teens, I believe. They were hunted down and created by Dr. Giro. And they just look like normal late teenagers. But, oh boy, you mess with them, they will break you in half. <laughs> Let me see. Let's uh, look at 17 really quick. And 17 will be making a return in this uh, multi-parter Irwin Toy Collection episode, and you'll see in the future. But here, he's just a standalone figure with a torn little tear there in his pants. And his orange scarf, red ribbon logo, staring to kill. My goodness, Android 17, he left an impression. He killed Dr. Giro, pretty much squished his head, and then... Well, I wouldn't say became the the main villain because that would be Cell. They were like the placeholders for what would become Cell. But yeah, Android Seventeen was definitely uh, definitely pretty badass, and he had his match with Piccolo, which was pretty uh, iconic. And he's got his belt there, and he has a gun. Why does Seventeen have a gun? Can somebody please explain to me why Seventeen has a gun? Sure, he likes it, but does he need it? Come on, he can break a gun. He can crush it with his hand. And now let's look at Eighteen. A.K.A. Krillin's future wife. Oh, I forget her real name. I should have uh, looked that up. But 18 still pretty cool. I like her get up. I like the blue. I like her look. Her hair, of course, and the blue eyes. Beautiful. And the red ribbon logo on the back of her coat. Or vest, I guess you could say. Really cool. And now let's bring out Piccolo. The one with the cape. And uh, without the muscle shoulders, that's weird. But other than that, Piccolo is pretty cool. His turban comes off. And let me just say, his cape does not come off. Do not attempt it. Do not... Yeah, don't. It is just the way it is. It looks like it's blowing in the wind. Really cool. Just, you know, he's flexible. Purple pants. His arms can bend and twirl. And his head can turn. And it doesn't pop off. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Because, like, the Dende figure had the head of this, um, detaching so you can take off uh, the uh, cape of that one. But no, Piccolo does not do that. I like his... Uh, he looks cool. 
like uh, the previous Piccolo where he didn't have his cl- uh, his cape and his uh, turban on. This is the one where he actually got it in the Android set here, but he has blue belt there too. Some versions have red. I don't know why they get that mixed up red and blue, but I like the blue. Yeah. Awesome. I like Piccolo. All right, now let me show you guys the back of the fourth series in the Irwin set. And there's Vegeta there. My cousin has Vegeta, but not me. <laughs> but pretty good set. Like, this is a really good improvement over, like, the last three. I mean, the first one was pretty good, but I feel like the last two were kind of lacking in star power, and they were just kind of trying to get some of the side characters out of the way. But And also, this is a good time to mention that the fourth series would also introduce the medallions. When a character would come with three Dragon Balls, and I, I am so sorry, I don't have those little guys, and I'll try to hunt them down, but yeah, every character would come with one medallion, and they were pretty cool. Like, we got, like, a group shot of all the characters there. Really cool. And then we got on the back, a reunion of the Z Fighters. It represents the Trunk Saga. Medallion 12. I'll do a couple here. Like, we've got Android 18 fighting off Cell so she doesn't get absorbed. Part of the Android saga, number 40. Even though it's not the right saga, I mean, it is the storyline, but come on. It's the entire Android arc. You know, it's not Cell. I mean, it, it should be the Cell saga, but come on. It's, it, they're all Androids. <laughs> it's okay. I can deal with that. Android saga, and 18 and 17 defy their creator and eliminate him. Well, it's more like 17, but... That's a pretty iconic shot of the two of them. Really cool. And one more I'm going to show off is Super Saiyan Super Vegeta? <laughs> but he looks pretty badass there. Uh, once again, uh, Android Saga. and It should be the Cell Saga, but it's okay. It's the Android arc. All right, let's move on to Series 5. And we're going to start off with one of my favorite figures, Dr. Jiro. Dr. Giru, Roro, I don't know, but to me, it's Jiro. It's pronounced how it is in the show, and that's how I'm going to stick to it. Dr. Jiro, brown pants, he can bend his legs. He's got puffy arms that don't, you know, art, you know, go articulate all the way, just like Piccolo or any other guys. But other than that, he's got his little energy-absorbing hand there. Almost looks like an eyeball is in his hand. He's, like, watching. But... I should have done that. Dr. Giro should have had like an eyeball there, but eh, you know, he's overthinking. He's got his long white hair, and of course he's got the brain. The brain! The brain is inside Dr. Giro. The real brain of Dr. Giro is inside the android. I think 19 took out Dr. Giro's brain and put it in the android. It's a long story, but... And here's his um, head cylinder. I guess his hat. Yeah, just be a little careful. If you get the new toy, just be very gentle how you put it on. Yeah. Just want to give it a little... There we go. Whoop. There we go. Dr. Giro, the creator of all the androids, the catalyst for the entire android cell arc. Hey, he's weak as hell, but just like Raditz. What can you say? There's nothing without them. All right, moving on. We got... Vegeta. Super Saiyan Vegeta. Power level is just what he wanted it to be. The best in the world. In the whole universe. Higher than Kakarot. That's all that mattered. And then he got his butt kicked by 18. But regardless, Vegeta here looks amazing. The plastic is spectacular. He is articulated. He is movable. He is playable. His hair is spiky. And I call it the mustard hair. I don't know why. <laughs> but look at that face. He is pissed off. His eyes are... Well, his eyes are okay. That's a pretty good shot there of Vegeta. The only Vegeta I have of the uh, original um, uh, 6 series. I don't have any of the other Vegetas except for one that's coming up in the Boo Saga. But Vegeta Super Saiyan is awesome to have in your collection because... Come on. You gotta have Vegeta in your collection. Who doesn't? All right, next we've got Gohan, Super Saiyan, piccolo cape-wearing Gohan with the uh, blue wristbands and the blue belt, purple pants, just like Piccolo, and his cape 
a little bit more, a lot flexible than Piccolo's. Piccolo's is a lot more stiff, while Gohan's is a little bit more, uh, you know, um, flexible. But once again, the armor, or excuse me, not the armor, the cloak or the cape, while while it doesn't come off, it actually shakes. Like a little, like a little jingle there. Kind of weird, but yeah, don't take his head off. Gohan is, you know, amazing and... Actually, he is the second Gohan that I have in my collection. We're going to move on to other Gohans in the Buu Saga, but this is the Gohan that would defeat Cell, even though he's not Super Saiyan 2. But, you know, this is the age, the timeline Gohan that would defeat Cell. Really cool figure. And last in the Series 5 that I'm going to talk about is Super Saiyan Goku. Now we're getting somewhere. Now Erwin heard us. Now they're giving us some Goku toys. Goku, Super Saiyan. Um, unfortunately, this one is a little bit loose. His arms are kind of a little wobbly. Not too bad, but his left arm is actually a lot more stiffer than his right. But other than that... This is the Goku that fought Android 19 and, you know, made that little appearance with Cell because, you know, he doesn't have that um, logo there on the front and his back. Actually, let's compare the two Gokus. There we go. We got Goku from, which is really the Goku from the Saiyan Saga. And then we got Goku from the Android Saga. Really cool. Of course, one has that belt uh, straps coming down and the one is just fully wrapped around his waist. Really cool. And both got the same shoes. I think, uh, yeah, they're pretty much the same. The Super Saiyan ones is a little bit brighter. Excellent Gokus. Now the fifth series of Dragon Ball Z also came with trunks, but ooh, maybe I shouldn't spoil it for you. I'll leave them back there. If Maybe if you already saw them when I lifted Dr. Jiro, but He's going to be in a future episode, but anyway, he is with the fifth series of Dragon Ball Z Irwin Collection. And now we're going to move on to the sixth series of my Irwin Collection Dragon Ball Z Irwin Toys. And we're going to start off with Goku. Look at this Goku. Awesome. I love the armor. I love the paint job. I love what he what they did to his hair. Like, like all those tiny little uh, little spots. This makes it really uh, really detailed and really interesting looking. If we, hopefully the camera can do it justice. There we go. Really cool. I love, like I said, I love the Saiyan armor. He just looks so tall. And uh, at the end of the episode, we're going to compare three... Oh my god, I got, I, I got so many comparisons here. We got three Gokus and we got, we got three Cells. Now we got two trunkses. My goodness. But Goku, this is uh, him before like he ever tried the, the Vegeta and Trunks bulk form. Like this is him in the time chamber training with Gohan. They should have did a should have been like a double set with Goku and Gohan both wearing the Saiyan armor and training in the time chamber. That would have been cool. But yeah, I love this Goku. He just looks badass. I love the armor. The paint job is fantastic. He's has both fists and he's just ready for action man he just looks like you piss him off he will tear you apart <laughs> Oop, let me put this one back don't want that to fall there we go all right up next in the sixth series is android 16 otherwise known as Arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> I love the green. I love the red ribbon logo that's like on the left side of his chest there. And look at that. That stare is like either hilarious or intimidating. You be the judge. But Android 16, standing tall and proud, loves life, loves animals. But if you cross him, he will shoot off his arm. <laughs> shoot it in your face. And then we'll give you a world of hurt. <laughs> Android 16 is cool. Even though I'm a little confused, though. Like, I like the attachment that they did here. Like, this is pretty spot on. But why couldn't they have done it into a fist? Like, I feel like if they wanted to do the rocket punch, they should have done the rocket punch. You know, the other arm doesn't attach like the left arm does. But it should have been a fist. 
Like if you wanted to grab something, it'd be a little hard if this thing's gonna, you know, come off and on all the time. But other than that, the uh, orange uh, mohawk. Oh, I can go on and on about sixteen, but he is really cool. M my, possibly my favorite android, next to uh, the one I'm about to talk about next. But flexible on the legs, can bend his arms, and you can also turn his head only to the point to where his um, armor will allow him. But yeah, really tall. Not as tall as Berta, but awesome figure. Awesome android. And speaking of androids, we come to my favorite android. Android 19. Android 19 has that same similar uh, clothing style and energy absorbing model as Dr. Giraud does. And I don't know what to say about 19. He's... He's funny looking, but he's awesome. He was the one who unceremoniously defeated Goku. I mean, he had him right there. And then Vegeta had to come in and ruin the whole thing. His, uh, this is a, actually, this is one of the uh, older models that I've saved throughout the years. Um, everybody else is probably, for the most part, you know, a rebuy. Because the ones I had when I was a kid, they were either, you know... Aged or destroyed the time, but but Android 19, not much to say about him. His legs don't really move as much as the other guys. Like his knees don't bend, but his legs move. His arms can, you know, twir uh, can twirl on both ends and up and down. And <laughs> I will absorb all of your energy. <laughs> I love Android 19. My favorite Android of the entire series until You Know Who comes in. And that You Know Who... Well, actually, I'll get to him in a minute. Let me go to actually what is my favorite Super Saiyan figure, probably of all time. Super Saiyan Trunks. This... I don't know what else to say. Where do I begin? This is my favorite figure of all Dragon Ball Z. The hair looks amazing. Just the size of the figure is not too bulky and it's not too skinny. It's not too small. Like, it's just perfect. This Trunks figure, just the way it looks and like the hair, like, you know, twirling down there. It just looks phenomenal. I can go on and on and on, but... You be the judge. This is my favorite Trunks figure out of all the ones I'm reviewing or have reviewed so far. Or I'm going to review. But yeah. With the blue attire just like Goku. With the yellow um, padding on there on the on the shoes and the armor and the hair. Just like Goku, he's got like those little, little, little tiny dots there in the hair. It's really interesting. Really cool. I love the paint job. Got a little marks there, but not a big deal. My favorite figure, possibly of all time, of the Irwin series is Trunks. Quote me on that. <laughs> Alright, now before I move on to the last figure of the series 6 set. A lot of S's. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the first blaster in this episode. Well, the only blaster, who am I kidding? And that is Imperfect Cell. Now, you want to talk about an awesome toy, this is an awesome toy. The only Irwin figure of Imperfect Cell to be released. This is an amazing villain toy in my collection. His tail can snap on and off, just like the wings. I don't want to do the wings, though, personally, but I'll put the tail back on. But yeah, that tail <laughs> gives me nightmares. Ugh. Don't want to be... Yeah, you know what he does. <laughs> But yeah, Cell, just like the, the Trunks and the Gohan figures in the uh, first Irwin episode, they were blasters. So let's Cell do what they did and fire away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the plastic is kind of like the Nappa and Raditz figure. Just very, um, very um, bitter, very, um, not like I said before, not fragile, but, you know, if you drop it, you're afraid you'll break it kind of feel. And it's a shame Irwin didn't make a five-inch figure of him. They only did a blaster, but... Oh my goodness. I can talk on and on of how cool Cell is, but... Yeah, the gr the mixture of green, the, the orange, 
and his beak there, and his wings. Really cool. Really cool, ver really cool version of Cell. I'll let the little energy ball lay on the floor there. And now I'm going to bring in the second form of Cell. And let me just say, this is not an Irwin toy. This is the Jax Pacific of Dragon Ball Z toys. When Jax bought Irwin in 2003, this is when they started releasing their own set of toys. And second form Cell, I mean, come on, I just had to include him. He's not Irwin. I know I'm kind of breaking the rules, but I mean, look at him. He's awesome looking. <laughs> First form and third form combined into one is what second form Cell looks like. It's a semi-perfect Cell with his long tail and it's very bendable. It's like a, it's like a, like a paper clip in there. You can only bend it in so many directions, but... Yeah, I just, I love the tail. I love the second form cell. Um, I gotta be honest. I mean, with Frieza, it's like you can kind of debate on his forms. But Cell, I love all his forms. I, 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 I can't, I can't debate them all. They all look so cool. Sure, second form Cell's voice is a little goofy, but come on. He would trade all that in for his perfect form. This is the last of the Series 6 Irwin Toy Collection uh, Perfect Cell. This is the main villain of the entire arc of the Android Cell Saga, and besides he's missing his purple line on his face, he looks amazing, marvelous, gorgeous, and deadly. You mess with him... He's going to form a tournament. He's going to blow the stadium up and then say, all right, who wants to face me? And then he says, all right, who cares? And then blow it up and then die from an 11-year-old. <laughs> um, his He doesn't have his tail anymore. It doesn't come out. Um, he's got... Actually, why did he have no wings in his second form and then got him back in his third? That's kind of weird. His wings are flexible, but I wouldn't bend them. You don't want to break them. But other than that, Cell is awesome. I love the paint job, his artwork, his detail, his articulation. While his arms aren't that bendable, except when it goes up and down, it's still pretty fun to play with. And also, Cell comes with Cell Jr. I actually have two of them. <laughs> I found one uh, when it came with Cell, and the other one I've had for such a long time. But yeah, I hope to find either seven or eight of them, whatever uh, Cell whipped out in the uh, the uh, Cell Games arc. But yeah, Cell is awesome. I love Cell. Um, personally, I think he's better than Frieza. You know, debate me on that. The Striking Trunks figure. He is dressed when he's about to eliminate the androids in his timeline. So let me just sec stack the uh, board right here. There we go. And now we got Trunks, kind of like in his kicking maneuver there. Kick the board. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Piccolo kind of had the same thing. You know, he just set the board up in a way and he'll like punch the board or whatever. But uh, this Trunks looks amazing. The hair is lighter than the other Super Saiyan figures, maybe even on Vegeta's level. Let me kind of compare the two really quick. Sorry, 18. <laughs> Actually, it looks like Trunks is lighter than Vegeta's. Goodness, all their hairs are different. I like it. But yeah, this is a, a really good Trunks figure. Um, I wouldn't say he holds a candle to this one, but... Oh, goodness. I mean, so many amazing figures. This is really when Erwin started getting good. They really hit some good... Uh, Hit some good hits with the first three, but this is when they were really getting home runners with their, fi with their figures. And I'd be lying to you if I said, you know, I wanted every single, every single toy at that time from Dragon Ball Z, but oh, man, they were, they were huge. And then by 2003, when the show ended in early 2004, they kind of, you know, they fizzled away and then other shows took over and a whole new generation was born. 
Oh man, I miss those days. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this episode of The Collection Crib. I thank you all for watching the second part of the Dragon Ball Z Irwin Toy Collection. I'm going to bring out all the cells, just like I did on the first episode of bringing out all the freezes I have. I'm going to bring out all the cells I have. There we go. I'm actually... Where is the blaster? There's the blaster. Right below my feet. There we go. Yeah, cell. He only has like that certain pose. He doesn't stand like the other two cells, but... Oh, well. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for watching this episode of The Collection Crib. There's going to be more uh, Dragon Ball Z Irwin episodes to come. Uh, I think there's going to be two more or three more. I'm not 100% sure. It's going to depend on how I separate the figures and, you know, vehicles and whatnot. But uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.